the zombie thought experiment now, um, at least for me, is often presented as AI because now that's easier, as, as a robot, because that's easier. Um, I don't know if it's just because yeah. it's in it's it's in pop culture now in the form of films and television shows, but it's it's easier to get to that point of um, contemplation, I think, by imagining a robot. I don't know why exactly I'm bothered by philosophers talking about zombies because it feels like they're missing. It's like talking about, it's reducing a, a joyful experience. Mm. So like, uh, that's like talking about, listen, when you fall in love with somebody, yeah. The other person is a zombie. You don't you don't know if they're conscious or not. You're just making presumptions and so on. It's like it, it says philosophers will do this kind of thing. Yeah. They, they might as well be a zombie. Or, you know, there's no such thing as love. It's just a mutual cal like economists will reduce love to some kind of mutual calculation that minimizes risk and stability <laughs> over time. Right. right. It's like yeah, all right. What I want to do with each of those people yeah. is I want to take. I want to find every one of those philosophers that talk about zombies, <laughs> and eventually give them one of those robots and watch them fall in love, and then and see right. how their understanding of how humble they are by how little we understand. That's the point of the zombie experiment. I mean, the zombie sure maybe the that's zombie the, thought experiment. That I mean, I I, I can't speak for any of for them. zombies. Is that the th is that no? The point? So so for me, I mean, I don't like spending much time on it. I think it has limited use for sure. Um, and I understand your your annoyance with it. But for me, what's so useful about it is it gets you to ask the same questions you're asking when you're looking at robots. Um, if you just run the experiment and you say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here with Lex. What if I try to trick myself? What's different about the world if I, someone tells me, actually, he's a robot, is essentially what the zombie experiment is. He's over there. He has no conscious experience. He's acting all the ways he is, but there's no experience there. So it gets you to ask some interesting questions. One is, okay, when it seems impossible, I just think, no, that's that makes no sense. I, I, can't, I can't even imagine that. Okay, what do I think consciousness is responsible for? What is consciousness doing in that, in that human over there that is Lex that I can't fathom all of your behavior and everything that you're you're doing and about without consciousness. So it gets you to ask this question. And these are this is these are the questions I begin my book with. Um, what is consciousness doing? It gets you to ask that question in, in a deeper way. And then I kind of found this alternate, I don't know if other people have done this, but I found this alternate use for it, which is even more useful to me, which is I'm able to do it sometimes. I'm able to just sit with someone and and you know get my imagination going and imagine there really is no conscious experience there in that person. And what happened for me the first few times I was able to do this is it reminded me exactly of how I feel when I look at complex plant behavior and other behaviors in nature where I assume there's no conscious experience. And to me, it just flips everything. It just flips everything on its head. It just gets you to be able. It gets you to be open to possibilities that you were closed to before, and I think that's useful. 